Do you actually know how good are professional cyclists? This is me, Marc Figueras. I'm 24 years old and I'm a Spanish journalist. When I was younger, I used to compete in cycling races and currently I'm training about 5-6 days a week. This is my friend for today, Dan Martin, winner of stages on the Tour de France, Vuelta a España and monuments such as Lombardia and Liege, Baston Liege. Y ahí Roglic intenta progresar por fuera, no, no, va a ganar Martín, eh, parece que va a ganar Martín. Ah, sí, 25 sí, sí. metros, ver, victoria ver. para Martín. Y segundo Roglic, tercero Carapaz. On today's video, I'm going to ride on the hardest climbs of Andorra with Daniel Martin. Basically, today's video is going to tell the difference between an average amateur like me and a professional top cyclist like Dan Martin. Simply, this video is going to show you how good a really professional cyclist compare to normal cyclists like me. Yes guys, so here we are. The other day, like you saw, I was with Dan Martin. Today I have a better, lovely company cycling with me here in Scotland. Ada, we, we're enjoying this, this week here in Scotland. Amazing, eh? Really amazing and good <laughs> weather. <laughs> good weather in, in Scotland and have a look on these legs. I mean, we're just doing the recon of the, of the gravel trip that we're gonna start in, in a couple days here in Scotland. But yeah, just riding here, I wanted to talk about that day I trained with Dan Martin uh, a few days ago. I recorded a video for my Spanish YouTube channel. And yeah, you basically can see perfectly in, in these videos, in these videos I'm gonna show you right now, the difference between a professional cyclist and amateur cyclist like me. We were in Andorra, it's the country where many professional cyclists, they live there. They told me that there's more than a hundred professional licenses uh, of professional riders that they're living there. The whole Ineos Grenadiers is living there. A lot of people from other t uh, teams, they are living uh, there as well. And we basically did three big climbs with Dan Martin. We climbed Arcalis, then Ordino, and finally, and I wanted to test how were the legs of Dan Martin after a couple of years of retiring and I think that wasn't a good idea at all. I can hear the demons call when they do what they do And now I feel like taking off, find a place with a view The pain is never gonna stop if it's controlling you I know the time can heal it all, I just gotta get through I just gotta get through So with Dan, we started speaking I, I asked him a couple questions in Spanish He's been living in Andorra for some time So he speaks, yeah, some Spanish And then I had the bad idea of testing his legs. I was really curious about how are the legs of a professional after a couple of years of retiring. He told me that on this season, on 2023, he just have ridden with his bike five times in total. So I thought, today is my moment. Today is the day that I can say during the rest of my life that I dropped Don Martin. Sorry guys, but I didn't succeed and I just got beaten as I deserved. Back to the tarmac, the training page of Dan Martin during so many years. And when I got to the top of Arcalis, well beaten by him, I just asked him, 
some questions about training and he told me some of the, the intervals he was doing when he was a professional. He told me that when he was uh, training for the Tour de France during many years, he was doing a kind of savage uh, intervals that they were 30 seconds full gas and then a minute, two minutes, I think uh, he told me, at 300 watts recovering. He was using 300 watts for recovering and then 30 seconds full gas. Yeah, after Ordino, we did the last climb together. Bechali is a climb where Sepp Kuss won a couple of years ago in the Tour de France. Not a very long climb, but very nice gradient, eh? 8%, 9%, you've got some sections of 15%, and there we just told each other, okay, this climb, we're gonna do it full gas. And that was the result. We started four people, and <laughs> kilometer by kilometer, one of each started struggling. I end up myself and Dan Martin together. And then when Dan Martin final, finally, in the middle of the climb, set his pace, his pace, just his pace, was for me like an acceleration. You see in this, in this video how Dan Martin is just putting his pace and for me, his normal pace for a climb of 20 minutes is like my red zone that I can just follow during one minute, two minutes. So yeah, the difference is savage. And he's a former professional, he's retired. So imagine in, in, in his <laughs> old days on, on the Tour de France. So yeah, he just put a, a little bit of, of pace during a, a really steep grid and I tried to follow. I just stay with him <laughs> a minute and then he was gentle. We, he weighed me as well and then he told me he hadn't even attacked. He was just putting like a high pace and he was dropping already everybody. And I asked him, I want to see a proper attack of the Dan Martin that won, like Liege Baston Liege, that won all these races and in the last kilometer he just did a crazy attack and that's the result. And now let's have another race, Kanye. Like I told you, professionals are just made of different material and today's video I think can help to see how good they really are. When we watch the Tour de France and we see sprinters getting dropped on the climbs, some people can wonder, I think I could even beat them. Sprinters climb slow compared to guys like Dan Martin. but. All of them, and I include sprinters on it, are tremendously talented and are way stronger and better than amateurs and non-professional cyclists. They can move crazy power compared to non-professional cyclists and I'd say that the most impressive thing that professional cyclists have is that they can last a lot of time moving very high power. I hope guys you enjoyed the video and see you guys in the next program.